This is episode number 280 of the Homeowner Show. Whether you're DIY or looking to hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett. Here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Homeowner Show. We're so glad you could join us from another episode here at the Homeowner Show Studios. How you doing, Kev? Oh, man, I'm fantastic. How are you? Wunderbar. So I <laughs> got to tell you something right at the beginning. Okay. Got to um, sneak it in? Yeah, I got to sneak this in. So <laughs> so this past week, mm-hmm. we went camping. Yeah. Uh, spring break, my kids are out of school, so a uh, bunch of families. Y'all, Tradition. Yeah, we, we thought y'all would be there, and you weren't, but that's fine. Well, not, uh, I, I'm my, I was there in spirit. You are. I set my progeny. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, it's true. Your family did show up for a day. Um, but one as we're there, it's the last night. Everybody's kind of around my campsite. We're hanging out, um, cooking s'mores, you know, doing all the things. And uh, someone yells, he's doing it. He's doing it. And I was like, <laughs> I, you know, whatever. Uh-huh. You know, there's kids everywhere. Right. He's doing it. And I'm like, who's doing what? And they're like, your son. He's riding a bike. <laughs> and I was like, what? Okay. Time out for a second. Uh-huh. My son's nine. Right. And there have been a couple of times in his life where he's wanted to learn to ride a bike. But I, he never really figured it out. Okay. And he didn't really care to keep learning. Uh-huh. And so he was kind of like, whatever. It's 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> it is dark. Uh-huh. And I walk out to the street, and my son is riding a bike. <laughs> For the first time... In his life. All by himself. All by himself. Yeah, yeah. Two wheels, no training wheels, all that. It, yeah. It gets better. It's on a little kid bike. Okay. When I say a little kid bike, um, a five-year-old girl uh-huh. was teaching him how to ride her bike. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, I'm not kidding. He's out there riding this girl. And I've got, I wish I would have. We we we've got a bunch of videos to show. Yeah, we do have some videos. I to show. should have linked this up because I've got a video of <laughs> you, it. Yeah, you got to keep that and, for uh, you know, uh, um, you know, for for memory's sake. Well, and, and like you know, you want to hold it against him later on. I no, it's so true. Yeah, I, and what's funny is like, um, uh, he's he's so proud of himself. Uh-huh. I mean, so I mean, does so, he have a bike at home? Well, yeah, but it's little, uh-huh. and so because you never sister- upgraded because. Right. Yeah. But his sister has a bike. Ah. It's nice and pink. And uh, he doesn't care. He's been riding it all. He's like standing up riding like all over the place all of a sudden. <laughs> so so here's what's amazing about this. Uh-huh. He just decided to do it. Yeah. And did. Like. But I mean, that's the way it is with most kids, man. It's like, like so you, you You can. You, I mean, like you can make them do things. Right. And like most of the time, if they don't want to, you're both going to be miserable mm-hmm. by the time it's over. And right. they're probably not going to be very good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like once they decide they want to do something, man, like the learning curve for them is just so right. good. I know. They can figure out anything. They really can. And I, I was just, I was like, dude, I'm so proud of you, man. Like, yeah. And that was even better, right? As soon as I said that, that was like, oh, I'm really going to do this. Yeah. Know? And so I, I, whenever we got home, he first thing he wanted to do was get on her bike, and so we did, and and uh, and so then I told him I was like, you know, it's a little bit easier if you like stand up when you're going uphill. Yeah. And he was like, oh, how do you do that? I was like, just stand up. Yeah. And he was like, get off the seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he then he started doing it. Yeah. And that that was that. So like. All day today, he's like, hey, look at this. And so he was, like, riding out on the grass and stuff and, like, doing different things. And I was like, man, look. all of a sudden, <laughs> riding a bike. So, yeah. anyway, now my daughter, who she's two years old, two and a half years older than him. Uh-huh. And uh, she uh, she's never one to – we've talked about this before. She's super uncoordinated. Uh-huh. Like, st- standing up just falls down. Right. And uh, she – but she's – she we got her a scooter and she's been riding it and riding it really well and uh now she's like I think I want to ride a bike too so which is great uh-huh. I want to, I want my kids to ride a bike sure but they've just never shown any interest and I'm not going to be like you're going to ride a bike yeah who cares uh, who cares it's not a big deal but I may have two bike riders soon so. yeah like, <laughs> like where 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 I grew up as a kid 
And I, I think like where we live, it's it unless you live, there's like one particular neighborhood nearby that it, I think it would be normal to ride your bike to school. Oh yeah. Any other place that you live around here, uh-huh. it's weird to ride your bike to school. Right. Up up in this part of North Houston. Right. I mean, the neighborhoods are so sprawling. Mm-hmm. There's a few neighborhoods I know of where there's kids that ride their bikes to school. I've seen it. Like, I, I get it. Like, if you live in one of those, I, I don't know. You're special. But, like, for the vast majority of us, like, schools aren't nearby the home. Nope. And so, like, and it's not safe. No, you you, you really got to get on a major road. Right. To get ride your bike to school in a, in a place... I wouldn't ride my bike on those roads. Right. Okay. So, but like when I was a kid, we all rode our bikes to school. Sure. Like it was, it wasn't like, hey, maybe Johnny will figure it out one day. It's like, no, I'm not driving you to school anymore. Right. So you can either get up at four Uh and start walking or get up, have a leisurely breakfast Mm -hmm. and ride your bike. Yep. That's what I did. Everyone knew how to ride their bike. Yep. But like now it's like my, like I could care less if my kids, they they all do now, Mm -hmm. but like one, like we don't really have a place to go riding bikes, right? And, and, and so, like, it's just not as it was like it was necessary for me as a kid, mm-hmm. and I. But like, I just, I've just never felt the need to like impress that upon them, right? And not only that, like where I grew up, a bunch of my friends lived nearby, so we would bike to each other's house, sure, yeah, that sort of thing. Again, I mean, parents the, just aren't letting their kids do that well, kind of stuff it, anymore either. Well, no, that's for sure. In fact, while we were camping. Uh, it was kind of a distance between our campsite and some of the others, and, and my wife is like, they can't go by themselves. I'm like, it's like there's, it's just us. Like there's other campers here, and right. I realize anybody could be a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that, but I'm just like, I'm I'm okay with it. Well, she was still, uh, it's in kind of ingrained. It's different. The yeah. world we live in is different, and it it it's one of those deals where now, like now my. My kids' friends live a long way away from each other. They couldn't bike no. to each other's house no. nearly the way we could. It's just different. Yeah, it's very, very different. different. Yeah, so, anyway. big time. So anyway, we got we, we got. I mean, it, it's not going to be a super long show tonight, no. but we got we got some stories to share with you guys, and a lot of them are animal focused. <laughs> I think they're, all I think of them. they're all animal focused. Yeah, um, just because we've had some stuff happen in our lives, um, big stuff for us, and Kevin was a big part of that, and and then we had some adventures with the. I had some adventures with my kids today, and then there was another huge cat incident <laughs> uh, up here in North Texas. And so we're going to be going through all that. Um, so right off the, I think the quickest one to get through is is the big the big cat. Oh yeah, and it was actually over by where you were camping. Oh really? Yeah. Well, su- supposedly. supposedly. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So the story the story broke. Uh, I guess it was a week ago now mm. that there. Uh, so this was a- in the aftermath of the Black Panther right. story, uh, which continues to go. Like, if, if you want to just have a chuckle, go follow the comment section on YouTube on our Black Panther video. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty hilarious. It is funny. There's guys from, like, New York. is like, I've seen one. And guys from Tennessee is like, I, I, and I'm telling you guys, like, anytime you start talking about Black Panthers, like, hillbillies uh-huh. and rednecks and outdoorsmen and... Uh, conservationists they, i mean they just come out of the woodwork yeah and and they have in well, our well, comment they, section they saw them while they were hunting sasquatch so right you know <laughs> 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 there, there's some funny ones in there yeah. it's, it's 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 worth perusing right um but but anyway, subscribe while you're there so the yeah just go ahead and, you know, <laughs> that way you can get more funny comment that's right. that's right um but but anyway in the aftermath of that there was uh, social media went crazy with Oh, by the way, okay, preface it with this. One of the things a lot of people brought up, which I think is a very reasonable and logical explanation of the photo in Huntsville. Okay. Texas has one of the largest exotic, privately held exotic animal populations in the world. Oh, yeah, they're they're everywhere. There are more tigers in captivity in Texas than there are in the wild, in the world. I mean, even more than Florida? More than Florida. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Tiger King was there. Suck it, Florida. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Texas, Texas is kicking butt when it comes to exotics. There we go. Well, and part of that is, is we have huge exotic game ranches. Uh, yes, we do. So, but there's also a lot of people that have exotic cats. Mm-hmm. And, and so, like, it's not unreasonable. Look, I, I, I think we've talked about my uh, friend of mine that accidentally 
<laughs> shot a red stag in the national forest not far from here. Yeah. And as I was talking to a game warden about it, he was like, oh, yeah, man, there's like two zebras and a couple other things wandering around the national forest out there. I was like, you wow. got to be kidding me. Wow. I yeah. didn't know that. So, so anyway, it's not unreasonable to assume that there could be a black cat of some sort that got out right. and is wandering Huntsville. Sure. That's totally within the realm of possibility. Sure. All that being said, social media went wild when a tiger was reported as lounging around the bank of Lake Livingston. <laughs> and there were photos. Yeah. And it was very clearly a tiger. Right. So, and, and so everybody was just like flipping out. One, because it was so close to spring break. Sure. Which was when Lake Livingston yeah. just is That's where we were overpopulated. Right. You know, people are skiing, people are camping, people are having a good time on the lake. And they're like, everybody's like, hey, watch out on the lake. There's a tiger and, out there. And that's the third largest lake in Texas. Yes. It's big. It's a huge lake. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool place to go. If you've never been, it's a cool place to go hang out. Yeah. Um, well, it turns out that whole thing was a fraud. Uh, so apparently, like, somebody did, like, an image search mm. through Google and found out that these photos had been recirculated from, like, an, somewhere else. Come on. On an older story. Snopes.com. Yeah. So. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, but, I mean, like, it got reshared like crazy <laughs> of course, of around course. here. Of course it uh, did. And I think even, like, some news channels ran some stories like, hey, there's a crazy wild tiger loose in Lake Livingston. Be careful this week. You know, all, all that kind of stuff. Wow. So, anyway, that was a thing. Well, uh, yeah. Um, again, like, the reason people, like, bought it like, I grew up next to a tiger. Yeah. Like, for like a decade of my life, it was yep. like a totally normal thing to go out in my backyard. I was like, oh, hey, there's Sindhu. Right. Like, there's the tiger. I knew her since she was a cub mm -hmm. up until she died. Mm -hmm. Like, super cool cat. Right. Like, not a, like, not a, right. like, even for me, it's like not a weird right. thing. Yeah, your dad didn't even shoot her when she didn't died. Didn't even, didn't even, <laughs> Awful kind of him. <laughs> Other animals, that's a different that's story. Right. It was, you know, it was vicious emus. <laughs> and if you're wondering what I'm talking about, we do have an episode about that mm -hmm. somewhere. <laughs> it's buried. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the depths of our, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, let's see. Well, let, let's let's go to the, the one that's probably going to take the longest. Okay. So I, I guess it was about a week and a half ago now. So last, yeah, not yeah, this past was, Thursday, but the Thursday before. Yeah, because well, I'm I'm I'll, I'll just tell you what happened on my end. I'm sitting at home, right, and you, I get a call from your wife, right, and it's like nine thirty at night, which okay, not that late. And sometimes, depending on weird things, every once in a while, your phone number shows up as her, right, which is odd. But I was in the middle of something I couldn't answer, and so um, I, I get a text message from her saying, I need you to call me as soon as possible. Right. I was like, I'm right on it. Yeah. Uh, so then, go ahead. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we we had a horse that I've, it's been part of our family since I was 17. He was 34 years old at this point. My son found him. He had fallen into a fence in kind of like a weird position and he could not get up and he'd probably been there half the day and we just didn't even realize it. Yeah. Um, and we couldn't get him up. Mm. So we, uh, Brandy reached out to you. She also, uh, got a hold of Jay Hugh, uh, affordable air out there, you know, yeah. give him a call. He's an awesome guy. I, two, two of my most reliable friends because mm. I was already out there just, you know, oh. seeing what I could do and exhausted already. Yeah. And, uh, so you guys came out, and we were just trying to get him up, and we almost had him up a couple of times. Well, but we we had him. I mean, the only thing that wasn't up was his back, his rear end leg. We could not get his rear end off. And him. I, 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 I still don't. I, I mean, it's possible his hip was broke. I mean, guys, like if if you don't know, like thirty four years old is super old for a horse. Like right. most of them live to be like twenty five. Right. In that in that area. Mm -hmm. Um. So like, had lived a really really long life. Had tried to die on us a couple of times we nursed him back to health he was actually looking pretty good yeah um but anyway he he was just he was just tired mm -hmm. and did not want to get up no um and and we were out there for hours just trying Dude, and we, trying and trying yeah me at one point and, and, and again all humane things right yeah. Yeah. at one point we had a come along around him trying to help him stay up. Oh, dude. Like, that, well, that, the next morning we had a tractor trying yeah. to hoist him and right. he was just done. Yeah. And it was like, at that point it was, it, it was becoming cruel yeah. to try and pick him up. 
So we had the we had to have the vet come out and put him down. It was it was really really sad. My my kids were devastated. My wife was devastated. I was I'm still sad about it. Yeah. Um. And you know, one thank you. I mean, like it was it was just good to have friends that we could call. Yeah. At in in such a time and like you know s- go through the suck. Dude, of, can of you that. imagine? I I just want first of all, any, you know, anytime you obviously day or night, literally. <laughs> um. I mean, the the call I got was, Kevin, can you come over here? And I said, sure, what's going on? I mean, I'm thinking something really bad has happened, and Uh and it was, right, Right, obviously. And she goes, well, Doc's in a hole, and we can't get him out. And I was like, I'm on my way right now. And so I I literally hopped up, and Kimberly, my wife's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm heading to Craig's house. She's like, why? And so I I said, I don't know. Doc's in a hole, and got to get him out. And so um, I can but seriously, y'all, if you don't have a friend that can that can help you <laughs> at that in that situation, like I I don't know, like find find a place, yeah. find a place to go and spend some time and build some community because you need those types of friends for sure. Yeah. So all, all that I mean, all that to, uh, to say, like he's he's passed on, he's moved on, he's buried, and all that kind of stuff. Well, this this past week, uh, my wife called me and she goes, "Have you heard?" Nate Bargatze's bit on dead horses. And I was like, oh, yeah, at least 10 times. She goes, you've got to share that with Kevin and Jay Hugh um, <laughs> because they, they were those guys in the bit. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's so good. And so I asked you before the show, have you heard it before? And you said you hadn't. Well, I had. Okay. I, I, the answer is I don't remember it. Right. But I have seen this whole, this whole bit. Uh-huh. Like not just this. Uh, he does long bits. Thing. If you don't know, yeah, like, he does shows. Yeah, <laughs> like whole shows. And I've seen this show, uh-huh. so I'm sure I've heard it. But it's been a minute. Yeah. So, so in in honor of in honor of Doc, we wanted to share the clip yeah. with you and watch it together. Um, one, I just I, I think I think one of the best things you can do with terrible situations is find a way to laugh. Sure. Um, Absolutely. So let let's let's right. let's cue it up. Let's see what Nate has to say about dead horses. All right. Here we go. On the way out there, I see a dead horse just laid out in this guy's yard. And I've never seen that before. And I was like, man, I bet you don't think about that when you buy a horse it dying. You know, what do you do? That's a huge thing, dying in your yard. You never you think of it. You can't just scoot it no, off into the woods with your foot <laughs> and try to get another one that matches before the kids come home. <laughs> You have to tell your wife to keep the kids away for a month. You got to Google how to move a dead horse. <laughs> You gotta probably try to get. We literally did that, yeah. It, and that's not easy. Wow. <laughs> that's what the blinders were invented for. Because it's like, just look ahead. Don't worry about what's going on back. He's, no, look. <laughs> Are you gonna get your friends to help you do it? And you can't spill the beans too quick on that. <laughs> you think it's hard for them to help you move a couch? Try a dead horse. <laughs> so true. You gotta lie to them like we're getting a divorce. Just come over. Bring your truck and some gloves. <laughs> When they get there, let me tell you, they're going to see it, all right? Everybody saw it. It was next to the road. They're going to pull into that driveway and just be like, I don't think they're getting a divorce at all. (laughs) I think we're here to move that dead horse is what I think. We we were a little bit more up front. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. you were. Let's let him bring it up, all right? Make him ask. (laughs) But I'll be shocked if we don't touch that dead horse. And if you ever have to move a dead horse, I've thought a lot about all this. <laughs> you want to be the first one to the horse, all right? You don't want someone else to tell you where to grab a dead horse. <laughs> so you run out there like you love it. Like you're like, this is what I hoped it was. And you get to the hoofs in the front and be like, all right, I'm here. You guys decide where you guys want to be. Oh, it's so oh, good. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I uh, well, I didn't get the 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 three of us all in because I forgot. Yeah, but, uh, us laughing the entire time in, <laughs> in the shot. I'll get it for the next one. But that's so true. It, yeah, <laughs> like we we literally Googled how we well, didn't Google how to move a dead horse. We Googled how to get a fallen horse up. Ugh. Like, and there was there was several things, and like I I can remember all of us like 
Because we had to move him oh. just to get him out of the situation he was in because he was miserable. Yeah, well, at one, we probably moved him at least 180 degrees. Oh, easy. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because he was in an uncomfortable position. Yeah, yeah. He had he had fallen basically into a fence post. Yeah. And was kind of like at a weird angle upside down and like we couldn't get him. Wa- it was terrible. Um, but like all of us like trying to move him, like we were all like, all right, where do I grab? Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> true. Like, it's so you, true. You get? And like, and it's one of those deals where it's like, all right, as soon as he gets up, just keep him up. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's all right, man. <laughs> He's like, here we go. It's 10 times my size. But yeah. Let's do this. And, and he was and like I said, he was like, you said he was up. Almost, and so I'm literally on his side with my hands up on him. I'm going, dude, if he falls, I'm moving. <laughs> and I did a couple of, and he, you know, he, did. he fell. Couple, he fell, and, and you know, he, he falls like a, you know, sack of potatoes. I don't man. know. 1,500 pound horse. I don't he's, know how much. He's 1,200 pounds. 12, yeah, yeah, he's huge. Yeah. So it was sad. It was, it was sad. And so I, I l- 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 let me just tell you guys, like, I, you, you think you love a dog. Mm-hmm. And dogs, dogs are so loyal, and you know, like us. And we have a dog inside, you know, lives with us, and we got two outside. Love our dogs, but since seventeen, you've had yeah, them since seventeen, yeah, that's a long time. And so, what, okay, you want you want to know what, what made it even worse? Hmm. Is okay. There's a couple of things that made it even worse. Yeah, it's right. I've had him since I was seven. He was he was originally my sister's horse, mm. um, and. Uh, when she went to college, he stayed with my folks. But I mean, he's always been part of the family, right? Right. Um, I, I and I'd, I'd ridden him a bunch. Um, but when I got married and we moved out here, my folks were like, "Well, why don't you just take Doc?" Because my kids had been riding him, mm-hmm. and so he 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 literally taught every single one of my kids how to ride. Wow. Um, and then, so he died. No, it was Tuesday. He died on a Tuesday. And I, I know it was a Tuesday because I uh, was speaking <clears throat> at a young adults event on Thursday night. Oh, right. And uh, I'd been planning, I'd been asked to speak there like two months prior to that. And a month and a half before, I had talked with a guy, uh, my friend Lowe, about what I was going to be talking about. He's like, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, man, I really want to talk about horses. Mm-hmm. And so like I had to stand up there <laughs> on a Thursday night talking about horses mm. two days prior my horse had died wow and so like and and part of part of my talk was talking about like trust and how that horse had taught my kids to ride and like I, I do that because I trusted him right and and how that relationship is like how that relationship like rider and, and horse is like it is with God and believer mm. I was broken I just yeah. the whole time man I, yeah. I couldn't I, I I don't know how I got through it it well, would. I don't either. Uh, well, I'll tell you this. Um, so, when <laughs> we'd been here for a couple hours, mm-hmm. I, I didn't leave till it was probably eleven thirty or so when I left, and uh, and and it was like, okay, well, correct. You were like, I, I'm, I'm just gonna stay out here with him, yeah. yeah, all night, and we'll wait till see what happens. Maybe he needs some rest. We'll see. And he did. He's. I mean, that that that's what you do. That you stay. <laughs> he stayed with him and. I mean, I, I'm sure Doc was laying there going, this is, I mean, whatever horses think, they're smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're smart. And he probably knew it was the end. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure. And he's like, man, I'm, I, I'm sure he's sitting there going, man, I'm I'm so glad that Craig's here. And uh, by the way, Ryan A. Duddle said, I remember Doc from back in high school. He yeah. Was, he was great. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> I've, known, I've known Ryan since like sixth grade, man. Yeah. So, yeah, he, I mean, like, yeah, that was... Ryan used to make fun of me because I, I would uh, how I carried the feed bags. <laughs> how you kid. carried them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah, at that age, you carry them however yeah, you, you carry them. Get them in the barn, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> however it works. However it works. Well. Um. So, but but anyway, so that was that was that, and I uh, hopefully hopefully everybody listening got a chuckle out of that because Nate yeah. Nate and I think he's actually fixing to be in Houston. Oh really? Yeah. So Nate, if you're listening, like we we love your stuff, man. We're a huge fan. If you want to come on the show while Absolutely. you're in town, you know, we'll, maybe Bring it. maybe you got another dead horse story. No doubt. <laughs> we we would love to hear it. I'll tell you my dead horse story. That's right. <laughs> and, and and look, Nate, we will promote the crap out of this <laughs> for you. 
Like we have subscribers. Yeah, we got a few. Yeah, I mean, we have subscribers. Maybe he needs a couple more. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we're not getting Netflix specials or anything. That's true. But <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet, that's true. Um, so the the other one is, and we'll we'll finish the night off with this one. Is I uh, so today is my youngest's birthday, and she, uh, for those of you that know her, know that she is my wild child, uh, my. <laughs> Fearless one, uh, like there's a, there's a story with her, Doc. Oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a good one. I'm I'm, I'm not going to tell it, but I'll, <laughs> you tell it if you want to. But that's that's one of the best stories I remember. Are you talking about the, where we found her buck naked, just yeah, right? yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. That's that's how much we trusted him. It was like we saw her naked on the horse, and it's like we're not worried at all. <laughs> he, she's fine. <laughs> it's just not something you hear every day. And then I mean, she was like what four. No, she was younger than that. She was, <laughs> she was two or three. <laughs> so and I'm sitting there going, I'm like, how'd she get on the horse? And well, she climbed on the she fence the and fence. told him to come over. Yeah. And he came over and she got on. She got on, yeah. No, no problem. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it's like not even a problem at all. Um, but yeah, so. It, <laughs> That's funny. But uh, like this is, this is my, goes around the pasture pulling up rocks looking for snakes. Right. And bugs. Yep. Child. So one of the. If we want to get them like something kind of cool, sometimes we'll get them shared present. Okay. And so this year, I I got them a magnet fishing set. Oh, cool. Have you have you seen that yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we decided to take the little John boat out to the lake and see if we could find anything today. Um, and so we're out there fishing, and it's it's kind of boring. I mean, if especially if you're not finding anything. Sure. Um, and so they're like, "Well, hey, let's let's go to the island. We have a like a." A little island in the middle of our lake. It's buoyed off so kids can go swimming off of it. There's a diving board. There's mm-hmm. a little pavilion. It's it's super cool. Yeah. They love going there. Um, but it was really cold today. And so, like, no, like, I think it was, like, 62 degrees. Ooh. And, yeah, and, like, no one wants to get in the water. No. So, but they were like, hey, let's go to the island. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's let's go to the island. We're out here. So, we get there. And they're, uh, initially, I think they're, they're ducks. But they turn out to be Egyptian geese. <laughs> And they're, they're just hanging out on the island, and my kids get off the boat. And as soon as they get off the boat, like right in front of them, I'm like, oh, there's some eggs right there. Mm. And I'm like, Uh-oh. oh, this, this, this could go. And I was like, hey, guys, like, heads up. Like, I think, I think those geese are getting a little, I called them ducks. I mean, right. sure. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, I think those ducks are going to get agitated because you guys are, like, standing close to their nest. Yeah. And it wasn't, like, 10 seconds later, like, one of them is, like, full-on presenting <laughs> – honking at my daughter and like jumps on her oh my bites her oh no and and so like i know that they're not gonna hurt them sure so like i just start filming yeah and i got like 20 minutes of footage (laughs) and so (laughs) um but i i wanted to share the funniest one at least the one that I caught on video. The right. funniest one was my daughter. Just the initial shock. Yeah. I was just like being attacked by yeah. a goose. Yeah, um, but you don't have that one on video. I don't have. But I sent you. I sent you the other one yeah. so that we could watch it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's do it. All right. So. Uh, yep. Here we go. <laughs> So it's a pair of them. Right. So, and I think... No. Yep. <laughs> You're safely in the boat. I'm, the I'm in the boat. <laughs> There's no way I'm getting out. Well, one, I can't. Like, I don't have any way to tie it off. Sure. So That's a good excuse. I keep telling them, I'm like, guys, just come back to the boat. And they're like, no, this is, this is the geese are right they're there. They're antagonizing the geese. <laughs> I mean, like, your son's walking up to the goose right now. No. <laughs> They're not happy. They're not, no. Uh-oh. Here they come. <laughs> the father's very aggressive. <laughs> the father's very aggressive. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> oh, that is that is really good. They- so at some point in time, the geese wrangle both of my children. I think at the end of the video, there he runs to the to the diving board. There, right? Oh uh, yeah, he runs all the way out of the uh, diving yeah. board to get away. So at one point, 
the geese have both my kids wrangled out on the edge of the diving board, and oh, one man. of them jumps up on the diving board and like starts flapping his wings and honking at them while he's on the diving. While board? they're all on the diving oh, board, it's like wh- where are we gonna go from here? Yeah, they're like, what do we do? And I'm like, fight back, <laughs> kick. <laughs> Eventually, my do? son runs around and grabs an oar from me. Oh. And just chases him off the island oh, to let funny. his sister get on the boat. So he he does his brotherly duty, but not before that. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Man, and like they people don't realize those things can go going fast. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's that's a good story. You know what else is a good story? What's that? People that use Lone Star Appliance Repair for all of their appliance needs. Man, I am seeing a lot of posts on social media right now of people going like, I don't, I, I have an appliance, it's broken, I don't know who to call, which is really? crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all. As I, much I mean, as we sing their praises. That's right, and you, and literally, you can Google people. But <laughs> that being said, uh, Lone Star Appliance Repair is a great, great company. And I'm not just saying that because um, they partnered with us here on the show. I'm saying that because i we really do believe we've used them. And uh, their number is 936-647-2364. You can call them up. They'll help you with all your appliances. They'll even help you with stuff that aren't appliances, like your sink and other things like that. Yep, because it's an appliance. <laughs> we- <laughs> Which is going to infuriate, darling. I, I can hear, like, just screaming at the speaker right now. Yeah, well, we, we actually had this conversation while we were camping this weekend about uh, you and... Oh, we all... Microwaves came up, too. But microwaves? Yeah, of course. They'll fix those. They will, because they, well, the, that's... Yes. Dude, uh, talking to their tech about the things that can go wrong with uh, microwaves... Yeah. ...is insane. Oh. And he was telling me about the parts that they have to... Like, the, he said the biggest thing that happens on them is they have giant magnets in them. Oh, yeah. And they crack. Oh. And that and most people just like they're, all of a sudden they're just microwave starts fritzing, doesn't work. Yeah, so like and it, well, I mean like and it could potentially be, do some dangerous stuff, um, which again, why you shouldn't have one. <laughs> they're just dumb. Um, <laughs> just like, That's awesome. Um, but if you have one and it's broken and you want to get it fixed, call Lone Star Appliance. There you go. I, I will they can tell do you, it. We um, th- th- there's a lot of things that are coming. We got a lot of reviews to do. Uh-huh. One of them is I finally bought an air fryer. Ah. Okay, so we can talk about that okay. uh, at some point. But yes, if you have any appliance repairs, please give Lone Star Appliance Repair a I bet call. you they fix air fryers. I'm sure they do. If they're like mine, like they're, like where they're the big industrial ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and there are some that you can get that are like in like literally ovens that are air fryers as well. I was, I was going to say that. That's yeah. a new... We never talked... Did we talk about the fridge from our... Uh, no river trip. No, why did we like, not do that? Like, I know because it's like we and we need to we need to ask the people over at Lone Star Appliance Repair. Like, is this something that breaks? Oh yeah, because both you and I were looking at the fridge, going like, "Look, I gotta I, have that." We, like, I don't care how old my fridge is right now. Right. I want a fridge that does that exactly. And we will get to that. We're we're, we're just gonna put that out. There okay, we need little, to talk about little, it. little teaser. That's yeah. fine. Well, okay. Do you want to talk about it now? What, I mean, like, what does it take? Two minutes? It doesn't take long. But it's because it's the best thing that we have ever seen in our life. Look, here's here's the deal. Anyone that watches the show for any amount of time knows. I mean, I'm, tonight I'm drinking my my grapefruit mineral water from H E B. Thank there you, you H E B. It's it's refreshing and lovely, delicious. Um, but that I uh, enjoy bourbon. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways that I enjoy bourbon is with craft ice. Of course, I like big cubes of ice. Why wouldn't you? And because it's beautiful, it's lovely. It makes the glass look nice. It chills the it doesn't melt too fast love it yeah the house we stayed at in it was over near san antonio seguin area yeah um anyway we opened the freezer and lo and behold the freezer makes craft ice automatically but like without you even do anything it's just there it's just there yeah ready all the time. <laughs> There's dozens of and them. And look, for, for somebody like me that has invested in like these silicone ice trays yeah. so that I can make my own, so that my kids could stab them with forks uh-huh. and put holes in them uh-huh. and yeah. have to buy more. Right. Having a refrigerator that consistently makes me craft ice. I mean, it's it's it, the most beautiful, wonderful invention. It was worth every bit of rent that we paid for yes. that house. Just to find out that that existed. Yes. We like both both Kevin and I were just standing at the freezer, just like gawking at it. Like, uh-huh. how did we not know that this was a thing? I know. How did we not know? I have no that idea. This was a thing. I, 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 yeah, because of all people, people that have a home show, right? 
and have an appliance repair, you know, sponsor on our show should know about these things. And I want to know, like, I want to know if they get called on them. Like, I want to know if it breaks a lot. Yeah, because if it doesn't, we're buying one. We're, we're getting a new fridge. It's coming in here. Yeah. <laughs> so, although I did, I did tell somebody recently. I was like, man, if I ever have to get another fridge, I don't know. I, I, I'm, it's going to be really hard for me to not drop twenty k. Oh, and go get uh, uh, sub zero, sub zero. Yeah, cheese. You're not wrong. Well, because it'll be the last one we buy, almost pretty much. At this point but it lives. better be, it better make that ice. Oh, if it de- well, if it doesn't, it's a so, no go. I, I I got a call. We did a we did an episode with Chef Colin. Yeah. Um, about that, and I need to call him and ask him, like, mm. hey, is this a feature you guys offer? Because yeah. if not, like it. We may have to stop being friends. What else can we do other than not be friends? <laughs> like, there's no more options. Yeah. It's our only option. Yeah. I don't know. I well, don't know. We'll anyway, see. Give it, Lone Star Appliance Repair a call or text them at 936-647-2364. And let me tell you, Craig, uh, we have a lot that we got to talk about. We were going to do a whole episode on that Airbnb that we stayed at. Yeah. We haven't done it yet. We haven't done it. And we, we still plan to. But I got, I got the air fryer. Uh-huh. I also have, um, I, I bought a, a new device that um, I, I think I told you about. Um, it picks up sweet gumballs. Oh, yeah. You did tell me about that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. We're going to have to talk about that. I also just ordered a log splitter. There's got to be people listening that's going to be, what the hell is a sweet gumball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not I, wrong. I don't, I don't know where, it, where I, I need to look up where they exist regionally because I don't know if it's like just a southern thing. Yeah, I don't know either. It's a sweet gum tree. Sweet gum tree. And they make these. Stupid spike balls, death Satan balls. Yeah, that are like spiky. They're they're everything that you would love if you're trying to hurt someone yeah. badly. It's like a giant goat head in your yard. You're not wrong. It, it, it's a it's about the size of a golf ball. Yeah, but there's spikes all around it, like like half inch spikes. Yeah, they're massive. Uh, but they they make millions of them mm-hmm. and drop them, and uh, they're they're a problem because. Especially if you have zero return mowers, yeah, uh, all the belts are underneath, and they will bounce around under the deck and knock those belts off and they, all the anyway, time. It's a big problem. So uh, getting those gonna, belts on is not easy. That's right. So we're gonna talk about that. I also got a log splitter coming, uh, which I got a lot of wood that needs to be split, and uh, so we'll, we'll review that. And then I also got the uh, the Ryobi impact wrench. Yeah, the torque, the torque impact wrench that'll take lug nuts off. Nice. That thing is. We got to review it because it's it's incredible. I've already used it. Yeah, it's worth worth its weight in gold. So we, we got all that stuff we got to talk about, and then we have another. Um, we got another home and garden show coming up. Oh yeah, that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have another live event with the net coming up. I think I think that one's April sixteenth. Yep. Um, a lot going on, man. Uh, so yeah, and that and that's not even including contractors that we need to talk to. Yeah. So, uh, lots going on. Uh, so look, thank you guys for, uh, for listening, for tuning in. Uh, this is going to wrap up this show. If you've not already gone and, and found us on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, we're all over the place. Go find us, Apple podcast, leave us a five-star rating review. That would be great. If you don't have a five-star, give us honest feedback. We don't even care at this point. Uh, yell at us. That's that's right. Uh, But yeah, we're here each and every Tuesday. Until next time, we'll see you later. See you.